inclusive. Uh, that basically is asking whether uh, our democracy is serving the purpose of a state, supporting a welfare state. And uh, before that, I like to explain that uh, if you remember, we have talked about, uh, and we all know it very well, the basic values of uh, Indian constitution, liberty, equality, fraternity, and social justice. Okay. Now, these are on the paper, but in reality, things are not like that. So what do we mean by that? Actually, democracy, I regard democracy as a journey. It's a journey from formal equality to real equality. And that is possible only when we have uh, the policies which include the people, which include everybody. That's why you will see that uh, when we call about Indian nationalism, we don't relate it to any one region, religion or uh, uh, language. We relate Indian democracy, which is uh, open for all men, women equally, people of all the regions equally. But that's at formal level. Uh, Jaydev is pointing a very good word, inequality report. And uh, that shows a gross amount of inequality. Top 1% of the people owning close to 30% of the property. Of course, roughly, I'm saying. And the bottom 20-30% are really on the margins of the society. So that inequality, actually, the one of the directive principles of uh, Indian state is that the income differentials should be reduced. Uh, another di directive principle is that uh, there should be a positive discrimination, positive discrimination for weaker sections of society. So these are the two central things. So around this, we will have uh, today's discussion, mainly because I regard five sections of society which are disadvantaged. What are these five sections? To begin with the first, I will say scheduled caste, scheduled tribe. Okay, number one. Uh, number two, women. Number three, uh, religious minorities. Muslims and Christians. And number four, workers in general. And uh, I'll put in this category, workers and the poor people. Okay. So these are the people who are disadvantaged. And inclusive democracy has positive, uh, positive uh, policies so that these people come out from their lower status, lower socio-economic status, uh, lower dignity, and come on the level, towards the level, uh, which should be a average uh, decent level in the society. So that should be, that should be the basic idea of a democracy. So when this was thought, uh, the fathers of founding fathers of our constitution already had this in mind that uh, what they call free competition state. If the competition is free, some people can run away with most of the things, while many more will remain deprived because of various reasons. So already in our constitution, there was a provision that scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, they should be given reservations. So how many scheduled castes are there? Scheduled castes are around 15%. Now I think it should be 16%. 16% of the population. So a reservation of 15% for them in uh, jobs and educational institutions was meant. Second was uh, scheduled tribes. So it was thought that they should also get reservation and they, a reservation of 7.5%. Uh, Today, I think they are uh, around 8.5% in the population. So 7.5% reservation should be given for them. Now, on paper, the reservation was given. 
but uh, the social structure is such that many a times they were bypassed in the process because by and large the major powers major uh, administration was in the hands of upper caste so through various mechanisms they are, they used to ensure that the reserved posts are not uh, filled uh, giving the ground that suitable candidate not found that was a favorite uh, cause to be given many a times these candidates used to get the interview call just one day ahead of the date of the interview so sometimes after the date of interview was lapsed they used to get the interview call anyway anyway but despite that there was some benefit and shedul caste and shedul tribes did start making some space in the uh, our administrative structure universities and uh, in the jobs also in the various jobs which are scattered and when we when i today i'll be talking about uh, reservation obviously one thing we should know that reservation when we are talking which is strongly opposed by many people is not for all the jobs it is only for the public sector and the government jobs as far as the private sector is concerned it has that has been totally out of this uh, policy and you will be knowing that these days of course the problem how indian democracy is becoming more exclusive how inclusiveness is going down that public sector government job public sector is being transferred to the private hands then obviously the policy of reservation will not apply and uh, the government jobs as you know are declining a lot so this process of privatization as dilip is pointing out is on and that will make our democracy more exclusive than it has tried to be so far so this is the first group shedul caste shedul tribe i am just clubbing them together because uh, i am clubbing them together because uh, they were uh, given the affirmative action clauses right in the constitution right from the beginning of the uh, indian state now the second thing was second thing was related to uh, related to other backward caste now other backward caste there was no such provision in the constitution and uh, there was no extra this thing but then later on mandal commission was appointed and mandal commission went into whole issue and uh, for 20 52% 52% of the other backward caste of course there were some criterion who is obc who is obc so it was calculated uh, what are the what is the access to health education uh, water and other facilities for them so there were multiple criterion which uh, mandal commission had uh, evolved based on this uh, it was uh, the uh, formulated and in 1990 uh, vp singh uh, the then prime minister implemented this report now as the report was implemented there was a huge uh, uh, outcry against this huge opposition to this and uh, some one student uh, some goswami i am forgetting the name uh, he even tried to burn himself in opposition to this implementation of mandal commission and uh, there is a, then, then this sectarian politics uh, uh, talks of merit and uh, there were efforts to see that uh, mandal commission is uh, uh, not implemented politically not many parties opposed it but uh, in parallel to this they started uh, religiously emotive issues uh one of the reasons for this uh, ram ram yatra rath yatras and uh, babri demolition drive was those people who were opposed to mandal commission they they came forward to support this divisive thing in a big number so the idea of mandal was to make indian democracy more inclusive and the result was that uh, it's uh, it, 
it has been implemented it has been implemented but there was a strong opposition and that came in the form of uh, many rath yatras and many other uh, policies which were done by those political parties who were opposed to this but now now a uh, reservation for obcs is a part of the system uh, in public sector in government jobs and uh, other places uh, in universities this has come in so this is a second group obc but uh, uh, that thing applies to all of these uh, uh, positive discrimination people uh, that uh, if privatization is done uh, if uh, government jobs are reduced their their overall uh, inclusiveness will go down now so these are the two major categories which are based on caste and tribe caste and tribe and uh, this is where government at least had the courage state had the courage to bring in uh, this this particular policies but the third group which i am saying is that about women uh, and as far as empowerment is of women is concerned we discussed last time that uh, even today uh, of course there was a positive encouragement for girls education and uh, literacy rate amongst girls was uh, specially emphasized uh, gradually they started coming in uh, but of course there was no reservation as such but uh, because of the strong emphasis on women's education girls education because of that emphasis girls were able to compete and in many areas their number today is substantial but of is still because of that as i we discussed patriarchal social structure the status of women uh, remains slightly less even even as of now so the third thing which is there that uh, uh, actually when we talk of this inclusiveness we have to talk at two levels uh, three levels rather one is in education uh, second is in the jobs and third is in the political structure now in the political structure so you will remember these three things education employment and political structure now as far as uh, political structure is concerned there were already reserved constituencies for uh, scheduled tribe scheduled caste so these were there but later on emphasis also started coming especially when the democracy was uh, uh, meant to reach further down it came in the form of panchayati raj now here the idea was that democracy should root, root, uh, reach to the grassroots level and lot of provisions were made for a positive discrimination for women in panchayati raj in particular but as far as the parliament is concerned a demand is hanging from last many years that uh, women should get 33% reservation uh, dilip is pointing out this is 30 73rd and 74th uh, amendment uh, as far as employment is concerned so but now let uh, we were now talking about the women's empowerment and women's inclusiveness in the democratic structure so one inclusiveness came because of the education a change in the social mindset positively encouraged by the state and uh, second was this uh, panchayati raj panchayati raj of course was a political structure but when political structure changes the other changes come in very easily and it is in this light that 33% reservation for women is being contemplated in the parliament of course it has not there is a strong opposition to this from men and established uh, organization so this has not been so far implemented though there is a lot of uh, effort from women's groups and women's organizations to see that they should get a adequate uh, representation in the uh, parliament because obviously if you see the structure of our parliament is dominated by men 
uh, roughly i will say roughly i will say that in parliament uh, more than uh, close to 80 to 90% are men while in population we have close to 48 or 49% women depending on the sex ratio depending on the sex ratio the women must be 48 to 49% but in parliament their rep representation is uh, not more than uh, 10% at the best of course trends are changing societal trends are training because society is going in multiple directions on one hand patriarchal structure is being reimposed we we discussed patriarchal structure so i will not make it more elaborate now on one hand patriarchal structure is being reimposed through politics in the name of religion and of course if i want to make a loose comment i will say even the things like love jihad and control on the lives of girls and women is a one of the signs of strengthening of patriarchal structure in the society so both the things are there on the one hand there are groups which uh, want to reimpose that uh, uh, political trends especially in the name of religion political trends uh, in the name of religion wherever they come either in the name of islam or christianity or buddhism or hinduism whenever they come they try to push back women in the confines of home to the secondary position in the society and the, currently that particular thing is uh, going on so on one hand women's movement and some enlightened political parties are calling for 33 percent reservation in parliament for women on the other side the at uh, now these are two very uh, what we call oxymoron this is oxymoron that uh, politically you try to give them more power and socially you try to create a situation socially you try to create a situation where control over the lives of girls and women is subtly subtly reinforced uh, even culturally if you see uh, even cultural mechanisms or even these political mechanisms coming under the garb of love jihad and uh, communalism they also try to reinforce patriarchy which goes into which goes into subordinate the women in their own life so this is a third sir? yeah yes hello uh, good morning sir uh, i think sir people are more polarized towards uh, religion and various things sir yeah it's not a, such a single issue sir i agree with that i'm coming to that i'm coming to religion religion i thought i'll take in the last and uh, so first three things we have talked scheduled caste scheduled tribes other backward caste and a third was this uh, gender are women now as alok well, i was just coming to this point actually the major exclusiveness in the society today is in the name of religion and uh, here i'll point two things one is that uh, majority of indian muslims uh, they come from the as swami vivekanand in various works points out that the majority indian uh, muslims they come from the dalit background poor background so economically they are coming from a lower socio economic strata on the top of it what happened that because of the polarization because of the communal parties uh, during freedom movement and uh, after freedom after freedom movement again uh, the muslim community as such at different points has been ghettoized uh, now violence wise this is a separate topic violence wise also the statistics is that the population of muslims in india is clo is 14.2 percent according to 2011 census but the victims of communal violence the victims of communal violence 90 percent of them are muslims so this is a, another thing which you can think separately now this whole communal violence acts as a acts as a factor introducing fear fear insecurity fear and insecurity they get twice a community so the only thing closest to this analogy i can give is that of uh, united states 
where African Americans were subjected to similar discrimination and they started living in ghettos. And to my own surprise, the biggest ghetto in the world is in the most so-called advanced country, America, right in New York, the biggest ghetto of uh, African Americans were popularly called by Negroes. They should not be called Negroes, but that that was there. Anyway, coming to India. So I am I don't hold the brief for people of one religion or the other. Similar situation is there of Hindus in Pakistan, in Bangladesh. Question is that wherever politics in the name of majority religion. So please try to understand two things. Religion is one thing which to me is morality and politics in the name of religion is something else. Politics in the name of religion, whenever it comes, it uh, appears to be uh, for that religion because it will talk, oh, our holy places, our sacred books, our gods, this, that, that and the other. And around that, they create a narrative. In this, the communal, the hatred, hatred is spread particularly against religious minorities and from hatred, orchestrating violence is a easy job. So that's why violence keeps happening. Violence keeps ghettoizing the community. So as far as the Muslims are concerned, first is that they begin from a very disadvantaged position. I'm talking that in a democracy, we have to ensure that there is an inclusive spirit. It was because of this spirit that initially our leaders, particularly Jawaharlal Nehru, who is blamed for everything today, he was very sensitive that this minority should not feel that uh, we are not uh, concerned about their welfare. So that uh, whatever he, of course, not much was done. So what is in Hindi called Jabani Jamakharch, at least that was there. But that was regarded as a appeasement of minorities. Now, there is a dis difference between positive discrimination, rather affirmative action and appeasement. When you do it for a weak community, community which is economically on the back foot, that is basically a affirmative action. In appeasement, I mean, you are trying to pamper a community, that community flourishes more than others and all that, which was not the case, but this became very popular, uh, appeasement. And in this light, uh, UPA1, I think it was UPA1, uh, they appointed a uh, Justice Satcher Committee. Earlier to this, Rangarath Mishra Committee was there. In 1980, Gopal Singh Commission was there. So Gopal Singh Commission in 1980, then Rangarath Mishra again, I think it was for 2005, and 2006, Satcher Committee. All these committees pointed out that the economic social conditions of Muslims are worsening. Uh, their place in the their place in the jobs very low, very low. Like uh, if you see class one services, there will be hardly one or two percent of Muslims. In class four services, also four to five percent Muslims would be there. So uh, such a committee, which toured all over the country, took a stock of this and it came to a conclusion that uh, religious minorities, Muslims, Christians, I'll come shortly, they are discriminated against. Actually, the state policy, policy, inclusive policy should be that they should be discriminated for. There should be a positive uh, this thing. And then people blame, oh, they want to go to madrasa. Nobody wants to go to madrasa, if you know, even today, Muslim uh, children, 2% of Muslim children go to madrasa. And those children, if you go, detailed studies tell us that those Muslims who are living in a place where access to modern education, schools is less, or, or the parents are very destitute, these are the situations that they opt for madrasa where free food and other things are available. So many of the poor 
uh, Muslim parents choose for that. Yeah. Yes, hello. Sir, I also give tuitions uh, to Muslim community also. Yeah. So they are they don't willing to send their uh, children in madrasa also, sir. Yeah. The person who very poor, they are just somehow sending their children. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Look. See, question is, then you know a lot of negative things keep happening. Then yes, a culture sir. keeps developing in the poor families. Ki school bhej ke kya hoga? Yes. Jal ki kamane lagega to acha hai type that. Yes. Uh, psychology starts building up and that yes. community psyche when it comes it is really dangerous for the whole society but democracy basically means that we take care of all and for taking care of all we do go for actions so such a committee recommended something that uh, these uh, there should be uh, positive discrimination and it's, if I'm right, one of the states also passed a reservation for a 5% reservation for Muslims. But that is again stuck in the legal tangles and that has not been implemented anywhere. Uh, initially, I also believe that uh, reservation for Muslims will provoke the communal forces and the things will be counterproductive. But today I have come to a conclusion that unless there is a some reservation for religious minorities, the uh, Alok tells me that uh, this Kerala has passed this five percent. Maybe that may be Kerala. I'm not remembering very uh, surely. So, in this uh, overall situation, such a committee report, its recommendations, which we are meant for the security, promotion of education their employment and other things remain unimplemented. That time the Prime Minister made a statement which was taken distorted and popularized to talk against it. Prime Minister made a statement that uh, the poor Dalits, Adivasis and minorities have the first right on development. Obviously, I also believe that just to give a personal example, in my family, I remember my grandfather very fondly and whenever there used to be joint meals, joint uh, uh, meal of the whole joint family, he used to insist that children should be given the food first. So I'm just saying that. Uh, that's what I see as a sort of a, when you regard the whole thing as a family, you try to take care of the weaker sections in a more positive way. But here, the total atmosphere which has been created against Muslims in particular. I'll come to Christians also. So this 5% reservation also remains in the limbo. And uh, uh, it is a sort of a vicious circle, vicious circle. Backwardness, backwardness leading many people to unemployment, unemployment leading many people to wrong paths. And that comes back to the whole community to demonize the whole community. Now, as far as the Christians are concerned, Christians are again a tiny minority, 2.3% in the population. And I don't know how many of you are able to read newspapers because of your heavy engagements. Four or five days ago, there was an attack on St. Joseph's School uh, in uh, MP on the ground that conversion is taking place there. Uh, we know that... Uh, Christian mission schools have been doing one of the best jobs as far as education is concerned. It is not meant only for Christians. Maximum, maximally, 50% children are Muslims, remaining are non-Muslims. And many of you might have uh, had the experience of learning in this school. But now they are also being targeted. And uh, at the moment, economically, because they are 2.3% in the population, it is very difficult to say as to where do they stand uh, economically. But when we say Christians, generally we have a very impression that they are financially, financially well off. But believe me you that uh, many of the Christians, uh, many of the Adivasis and Dalits who became Christian because of their close contact with 
missionaries over a period of decade from whom they benefited in the form of health and education facilities. Many of them still, some of them benefited because of the education which they got, but large section still remains on the margins of periphery of the education and the jobs. So this is, uh, this is where our democracy stands. And uh, I, while we are talking of uh, inclusive democracy, currently what is happening is that the whole democracy or the dominant discourse in the society is revolving around religion. If you see the front pages of today's paper, there are special, uh, what they called, uh, before the newspaper, there are advertisement pages. That is the heaviest paid uh, advertisements. And two pages, three pages are on Kashi Vishwanath. Of course, people should respect their religion. But uh, the primarily primacy of uh, one religion and even in the religion, only of holy places, ignoring the plight of poor of the community is the worst form of democracy. The democracy should mean that, of course, you want to do for Hindus. 30% 30, 30 of Hindus are below poverty line. Try to see they come up. During Corona time, lakhs and lakhs of Hindus migrated from cities to the villages. More things should have been done for that. That I will appreciate any time. But when you just harp on identity of temples or things in the name of religion that sets back the community. And then on the top of it, the issues like if you see uh, cow beef lynching. Now, this is again a way of excluding the community. Cow beef lynching is a very interesting uh, story. You know that in Vedic period, there was a big sacrifice of cow. It was a ritual that somras on one side and beef on the other was the, uh, one of the patterns of that time, which Gautam Buddha opposed. He said animals should not be killed unless you are using them for food, etc., etc. And from that, uh, today it has been brought back as a symbol of one religion. Uh, how can animals be symbol of one religion? Animals belong to all of us. We all have uh, animal products and all that. Uh, so in the name of that, when uh, lynchings take place, that is, now I'm talking of political actions which are excluding communities. So far I was focusing on the economic patterns, social patterns. Now I'm talking of political things uh political things because of which the communities are excluded now in cow beef lynching you'll be uh, horrified to note that between 2014 to 2016 nearly 100 people were lynched mob lynched and out of them 90 were muslims 10 were dalits some of you will be remembering that flogging of four Dalits in Una, Gujarat. These Dalits were taking the dead cow because they use a cow leather. And of course, many of you may be knowing cow leather has its own speciality. Many times it is used for military and other purposes. Uh, those special, it has a special qualities because it is used more for military products, boots, and other things like that. So those four Una incident, now just think of these two, lynching and Una incident in this is a political attempt to exclude sections of society from the democratic processes. Now, after that, many, many Muslim boys were taken off like as such education is difficult and when uh, when one boy muslim boy who was carrying a tiffin 
with uh, some non vegetarian food he was uh, done to death done to death in the uh, train after that many children were withdrawn from the schools of, out of the fear of uh, such incidents so this is a political attempt to exclude marginalized a really a community now when st joseph school is attacked again this is another attempt to marginalize and exclude another community from the democratic processes which our society our uh, state mandates that it should be trying to include the people and when una flogging take place at one time in haryana in gohana gohana two dalits were killed because again they were taking dead cow dead cows uh, they use for hide and other things and uh, they were taking two of them were killed so one of the top leaders said that according to our shastras according to our scriptures the life of cows is very important so even if two dalits have been killed what is a big deal so such horrific things we are witnessing in our society and this will definitely uh forget the we are discussing inclusiveness in indian democracy there are positive steps by political parties to exclude weaker sections of society from the mainstream of society women are concerned they are dictated that you can't take part in valentine day sometimes they are dictated you can't wear western clothes you can't wear wear jeans they are attacked if they go to pub with their friends i hope you know all these things which are happen why these are being happening these attempt to marginalize them to subjugate them in the society and then we see like most of the weaker sections we saw in all these weaker sections complicated processes are taking place lip service is done that uh, we want that everybody should develop but the steps are taken whereby some people are excluded some people are frightened to be the part of the social processes and that's where we have to see that uh, things are going in a very negative direction so this is part one that uh, inclusiveness in our democracy and as uh, one of you pointed out the inequality report it is again very frightening even i was surprised to know that our constitution says government should undertake the policies whereby the economic gap between rich and the poor is reduced and this report tells us that this gap in the society is increasing at a very great speed at a very great speed then you see most of the public sector which was built with the great effort that public sector had some flaws had some flaws so what do you do if there are flaws in the public sector what do you do if the baby has some flaw we don't throw away the baby we try to see that those flaws are rectified if the bath water becomes dirty we don't throw the baby with the bath water we change the water and try to see that baby has a cleaner water to take bath so this is where we are rather than saving the baby and changing the water we are throwing the baby with the bath water and the impact of this will be that whatever exclusionary tendencies so now i will say uh, three four things which are happening which will worsen worsen the inclusive tendencies is one is at economic level uh, the privatization due to which uh, the new jobs there will be no one of course the number of jobs will come down number of jobs will come down number two that affirmative action will not be possible these two major things will be there because of that second is the political steps which are going on and some of us may feel that this is good for our religion but believe me you that no religion teaches us to hate others 
no religion teaches us violence religions are the basic thing about love and amity to demonize the other community oh other they are like that so we have to take care of this is a pure make believe concoction it's a construct which people build up to become politically more powerful and these if this politics progresses further our democracy anyway as, as we saw this uh, uh, equality report same way you see there is a international documentation of the democracy report democracy report in democracy report you see that india's place in the democratic countries has fallen down by three places that the democratic spirit in the country is coming down drastically so my basic urge and appeal and understanding is this that if we want a inclusive democracy which we should have which we should have that inclusive democracy should keep itself away from the politics which masquerades which wears the clothes of religion and tries to identify with one religion and that i think is the biggest step in excluding different sections of society if you want you can supplement all this with data economic data and other data but i have given a conceptual picture of what inclusive democracy should mean and how we are going far away from that now today since we have time i will encourage some of you to ask questions uh, depending on today's uh, discussion and probably if you want you can ask some other questions from the earlier lectures also which we had now because i think india's greatest strength has been its uh, freedom movement greatest strength has been the inclusive character of freedom movement because the freedom movement was inclusive we could unite the whole country despite there were separatists muslim separatists in the form of muslim communalism and hindu separatists in the form of other political organizations but majority of the people stuck with the freedom movement some revolutionaries like bhagat singh were there some other great uh, people like uh, subhash chandra bose also contributed but the freedom movement not only fought against colonial rule but it united us it united us on the principles of inclusive character and that is what uh, i want to point out Jaydev asks, "Can you tell me the main points once you have focused, like employment, inequality, education?" Yes. Now, so the, this, these are the three things uh, uh, which are uh, which are uh, available with us. Now, the main points, as I pointed out, so first, we if we take employment, we see that in employment, uh, the domination of upper caste, people of majority religion, is very heavy. i'll just request you to find the statistics like government jobs percentage of hindus vis-a-vis -vis muslims and of course i had studied about muslims class 1 2 3 4 so in class 1 they are close to 1% class 2 3% 3%, class 3 and 4 close to 5% so this is a so obviously all others are hindus as far as the employment is concerned uh now uh, i'll come to dilip i'll come to the screen layer in a minute so first is that this um, this data is very clear that majority of those employed are belonging to majority religion number one number two of course 7.5% for tribals 15% for dalits and 26% for obcs this by and large uh, now is close to what we have got in employment as well as in education so today the major uh, people those who are left out one is of course women mainly from the political st uh, strata while women have made a good good uh, entry good presence in uh, education and uh, services though it may not be 
close to 49% which they should have. But it is picking up and uh, by and large, uh, one of the processes is going up. So this is as far as uh, employment and uh, education and other things. And those being left out are primarily uh, Muslims and partly Christians, partly Christians, Christians because they themselves are 2.3% and some places because of the missionary schools and other mechanisms, they are able to cope up with these things. Now, Dilip is asking about uh, concept of creamy layer in SCST will be much more inclusive, but why Supreme Court is still not providing its judgment. Yeah, now Supreme Court may have its own reasons that I don't know, but uh, let's understand the concept of creamy layer. Now, what is happening that even in the reservations of SC, uh, STs, what happens that uh, one generation, one family takes advantage of this, it becomes slightly privileged. So it becomes in a position to give a similar benefit to its next generation. And those who are left out, then they remain left out. So this in a way becomes creamy layer and there is a uh, suggestion and call that those families which have taken advantage of reservation twice, or it can be, we can put it at two times, three times, they should not be given further benefit of uh, this reservation process. So that that basically is uh, as far as criminal is concerned. Now, once Supreme Court gives a judgment, probably it will have its own logic because Supreme Court has to consider the practical situation, the constitutional position, because in constitution, the criminal layer is not defined. The constitution makers, when they were making the constitution that time, that itself was vague that they considered scheduled tribes and scheduled castes for reservation. That itself was a big step at that time. It was creamy because our reservation policy was not there. So obviously they could not anticipate what is creamy going to happen. And of course, I do believe that some of the castes, they have been left out from this process of uh, reservations. Now, Alka is wanting to ask a question, but before Alka already, uh, Banker Lang Marvin asked, is digital revolution further impact inclusiveness in our country? So one by one, uh, and uh, huh. Alka, I'll ask you to, uh, before be, uh, I'll answer Marvin's question. Yeah, digital revolution has one advantage that since it is not dependent on the formal education so much, so much, partly of course it is, to a great extent it is. So some of the people who are left out, uh, like uh, Muslim minorities and all that, many of those children are able to take advantage of that digital revolution. Those people who are marginalized because of political things, many a times these informal sectors come as a big relief to them for coming forward. And that's again the parallel example is in uh, uh, United States of America, the African Americans, they were denied the opportunities in the mainstream. So they, they went more into uh, culture, uh, sports, and lately into the software and other things also. Of course, software is another thing that uh, this digital revolution, uh, the Indians have taken a fairly good advantage of this, not only in India, but abroad also, but within India also, my my observation is that many people from the deprived sections are doing much better in the uh, areas related to digital uh, digital uh, revolution alka your question please good morning sir good morning alka sir so i wanted to ask a question about the recent uh, democracy meeting with joe biden <laughs> on the countries but have excluded uh, this china and russia right and immediately after that china have uh, uh, declared this white paper thing and they told that that they are the they are a de democracy whereas in their party's name only the communist uh, <laughs> factor is there so what is how can we analyze this thing sir like uh, what kind well, of democracy china, china doesn't have democracy 
China doesn't have it. See, name, you know, you can call, uh, I can call myself Mahatma. That doesn't make me Mahatma. So Chinese, see, communists, they call themselves democracy or whatever uh, that is secondary. In practice, China is a dictatorship of communist party, right from top to the bottom. So when Joe Biden doesn't put them in the democracy concept, it is very clear that uh, actually the deeper philosophically, I must tell you, the communism envisaged by Karl Marx is the most democratic thing. What is communism? Commune based society. What is a commune? I live in this uh, area. Thousand of us, we decide about our things and we collaborate with thousand of us in the neighborhood, depending on the democracy builds up from bottom to top. That was a dream of Karl Marx, which is totally not applied anywhere in the world. For a few days in Russia, communism might have been there when workers were in the real control, but that is not beyond a week or two. Communist Party soon took over and controlled, and that is no democracy. So when Joe Biden, there may be other reasons also for that, because uh, for America now, the biggest threat is from China. America's economy, within America's economy, China has made deep inroads. So whether that has something to do with or not, or whether Joe Biden is a Messiah of democracy and really wants to democrat, promote democracy, that time alone will say. But so far, let me point out another thing also. Biden apart, American state has always promoted dictators. Like say, India was there, Pakistan was there. America was favoring Pakistan more than India. And America was a dictatorship most of the time. America has so many friends in the uh, other parts of the world which are dictators. So that way, of course, uh, probably Joe Biden may have something else also in mind. I'm not sure whether they really want to promote democracy. And if they really want to promote democracy, that will be a very good day for the human race. Because so far, uh -huh. my understanding is that they have been a big obstacle to development of democracy in many countries. Sir, one more yeah. thing is here that China is also claiming to be the largest democracy right now. Like in, Large, instead large. of India, largest democracy instead of India. No, 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 no. China is not. I don't think India is called the largest democracy. Yeah, but in is, the white paper, they have to, you know, India is not the largest democracy. We are the I largest democracy. See, they have a because single. Single see, candidate see, stands in the election. Single candidate stands in the election. Because elections are the central hallmark of election. How independent the elections are. So actually, yeah. they are pointing out the inequality which is prevalent in India. And they are comparing it with their own uh, country. Where uh, females and uh, women are more prosperous than India. They are pointing okay. those things yeah. out. But see, the indices of democracy are this. Free and fair elections. Multi-party system. Multi-party system. China, China doesn't have this. And in that one candidate will stand from the Communist Party and uh, he will have to be elected. So question is that is a uh, throwing the wool in the eyes. There is not a democracy at all. Uh, Ila, Ila, you have a question you like to ask? Yes, sir. Uh, am Please. I audible? Yes, you are audible. A bit louder. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask uh, that this whole concept of inclusiveness that democracy that? needs to uh, the whole concept of inclusiveness in india mm -hmm. the democracy thing so uh, we have seen that the constitution makers provided reservation in the basis of SCST and the women's then it goes to the obc then it further goes to the ews now uh, the committees are also recommending the creamy layer section and so, recommending? Uh, sorry recommending the creamy layer section now in particular sc ah, and st that we, we need out. to accept uh, yes sir so won't this is uh, increasing the reservation part more rather than the inclusiveness and whereas on the other side the constitution makers also provided in the dpsps that you need to have uh, as the time considers the government should also provide for the uniform civil code in the country so isn't this uh, going more towards the reservation part whereas in uh, if we see the social structure it has gradually increased that we now don't consider the 
see i think uh, hierarchy uh, of their mindset it has increased no what has increased? i just wanted to ask that the mindset na the mindset of the youths and the people have increased from those untouchable and all things and now if we go on increasing this reservation part won't it be impacting the uh, thing also it was good to make all uh, come at the level playing field but now won't it impact in the uh, other way in our inclusiveness that matlab this shouldn't be the criteria only the reservation can provide you the suitable inclusiveness in the democracy matlab uh, uh, i want to share a idea that if it would be better na if we, if we would include that economic hierarchy we see we see that uh, how much economy how much person is earning annually and that should be the basis for the reservation it would be more inclusive is it uh, right or not i uh, see, i mean what's this what is the last thing you said the economic thing should be the basis of reservation that, yes sir the how much it would include everybody na then no uh, caste no religion everybody will be considered as on the reserved category only only on the basis that how much they are earning in a per year that will be including uh, the more inclusiveness pattern in the democracy i think according to me see there are two things in here uh, yes, the first theoretical thing is that why there is backwardness and the basic answer is that some people remain backward because of their caste structure because the linkages within their caste don't give them that advantage of coming to the uh, up, upstream that was a basic idea now second thing is that the overall development of the society in the direction where you think of the average people in the economic policy that is not there in the economic policies uh, in the private capital you see somebody earns in one second what i can't earn by in my whole life i hope you understand i am a retired yes. professor so somebody who earns in one second what i can't earn in the whole life so and somebody else uh, can't uh, earn in the whole life what i earn in one day or one month right so this sort of a disparity in the society has to be addressed and that economic policies there which uh, the earlier economists like amartya sen or who was this latest uh, uh, nobel laureate from india along with his french wife i'm forgetting the name mukherjee or uh, some some uh, another bengali professor so those policies are one which tell the state that your policies should be such that structurally structurally the all are able to take advantage of that but that the government doesn't accept the simple path is to promote some rich corporates who can support you in elections who can give you all the funding for your uh, elections and manipulating elections etc etc one of the reasons and uh, second thing is uh, philosophical third thing is i think uniform civil code should not be linked up with this inclusive character that's a separate chapter uh, i don't know whether we have to discuss that sometime if uh, time permits we will discuss but uniform civil code is something entirely different and that should not be mixed up with uh, inclusiveness in the democracy because because of uniform civil code or because of civil code which relates to personal laws of hindus and muslims and christians because of that nobody remains excluded from the society from the social structure that's why uh, that's why that i think you should not link it up with this and judge according to income of the castle anyhow yeah so uh, so i yes sir so i wanted to uh, point out that in india basically what is happening is almost 90% of uh, total employment or education is reserved only 10% is left out uh, for everybody else now i also take reservation but i'm not i'm uh, i can say that very clearly but still i feel that 90% if we uh, calculate na whole uh, percentage wise that sc 19% sc 10% obc 41 ews 20 and general 10 it total includes up to 90 or 95 and it includes women 5% as well so 95% of the jobs are reserved so uh, it uh, particularly shows na the reservation category or the that now people are uh, so much de- uh, dependent on this reservation part that if we say na uh, that we need to exclude uh, we need to uh, disregard this reservation part and we want to apply a uniform code that they they will uh, communalism will rise more than i think uh, in the past uh, no, scenarios your point is right because our lopsided economic policies is reservations are come but see even if they are 95% but they include that particular population sector also na 
there are 52 percent obcs reservation is 26. only sc and sts the reservation is matching to their population as far as the obc the largest chunk the reservation is 26 percent so question is on one hand reservation is rising on the other hand it also incorporates a larger section of society Yes, anyway, yes, so we can just think a bit more about it also. Uh, but I'm glad that you people, uh, this is a quite a stimulating topic. Think more about it. We can probably carry it on on email discussion, etc. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, so thank I'll you. I'll take leave of you, friends. Thank you very much. See you again.